Hello everyone. In this series, we're going to demonstrate the concept of shielding effectiveness. Engineers often ask me, saying, Min, you've got so many different types of shielded cables. Which types are suitable for me? And in terms of the performance, do we have any performance criteria for these shielded cables? And how do I justify the cost? To answer all these questions, we create this series focusing on shielding effectiveness of shielded cables. Again, as always, we're going to demonstrate the concept by using simple demonstrations. We're going to skip all the theory, which often talks about the shielding effectiveness in terms of dB or insertion laws, but really focus on the uh, real-life application. So we hope you enjoy this series, and uh, let's crack on. Okay, so for this um, episode, we're going to use uh, this uh, specially made demonstrating kit. Essentially, we have uh, different types of comb generator inside this box where we can generate not only high frequency but also fast rise time signals. And in order to analyze the uh, cable shielding effectiveness, we have uh, a few interfaces, right? You can connect a coaxial cable, a D type shielded cable, or USB cables, okay? And the way we're gonna uh, basically analyze the shielding effectiveness is by clamping a current probe on a shielded cable and then we're going to use both the uh, frequency domain and time domain for our analysis. As you can see, apart from the USB ports, we also have a uh, D-type connector right on this box and currently it is connected to a shielded cable. So this end, we, we actually uh, connect the shielded cable quite well to the connector, right? And it is a shielded cable. And on the other end, we uh, connected a small resistor and using the copper tape to uh, enclose it to represent another uh, shielded cable um, connection, okay? So in a sense that this shielded cable is terminated at both ends, okay? So the idea is to analyze the shielding effectiveness of this type of shielded cable. All right, so um, we, again, we're using current probe and we want to look at uh, the noise from both the time domain and frequency domain uh, perspective, okay? So on the time domain, we set up the current reading. So whatever, whatever we measure will be uh, in current. Okay, so let's uh, start the uh, generator, okay? So, and uh, first we're gonna have a look at the frequency uh, performance, okay? So you can see uh, this is the noise, right? Plotted from one megahertz all the way to a gigahertz. And this is really the noise measured on the outside of the shield, which obviously it is quite bad because we want the shield to work its best, to, to, do, to do its job. However, in this case, as you can see, the shielding effectiveness is at, actually rather poor. So I'm going to switch it off so you can have a comparison. This is off and this is on. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this plot and then we're going to have a look at the time domain. Okay, this is the time domain um, analysis of the noise. As you can see, in terms of the, the amplitude of the noise, it shows a peak-to-peak -peak current of about 2.4 milliamps. 2.4 milliamps. And this is really the noise shape, right? Uh, let me trigger it. Yeah, so you can see this is the noise we measure. It's about 2.4 milliamps peak to peak in the time domain, okay? Now here's the interesting bit. We have another cable, which is the same length and configured pretty much the same way as the previous case, okay? But instead, right, I cut this uh, shielded cable uh, so that you can see what's uh, was inside okay so you can see that um, this type of uh, shielded cable uses a small thin foil most likely aluminium like pretty much like the one we're using for our kitchen or even thinner sometimes they use mylar foil right and uh, inside you can also see some uh, uh, wire right this uh, this this bit is what we call drain wire, okay? So the drain wire connected to both ends and then there's an outer shield, often uh, aluminum or mylar foil, okay? And here is also interesting. I cut this bit where you can see this is also aluminum foil, right? Very fragile, okay? So effectively, I destroyed 
the shielding connection or termination of uh, this shielded cable at this end. So in theory, this does not provide any shielding effectiveness at all. So we're going to connect this to the same box and show you the difference between this shielded cable against our previously, you know, shielded cable and see the difference. Okay, so now we connect that um, almost destroyed shielded cable to the box, right? And let's have a look at the uh, EMI uh, spectrum performance, okay? Now, as you can see, the yellow trace was the results where we measured previously, whereas the, uh, the purple one is the new result. Surprisingly, that the two are pretty much the same. The two are pretty much the same. But in the higher frequency, there's a slight difference, but that's might due to you know, the cable uh, layout and, and, and build difference. But the majority of the noise, as you can see, is pretty much the same as before. So that actually highlights the importance of using the right type of shielded cable. For high frequency, such as, you know, uh, SPI line or, you know, megahertz or uh, hundreds of megahertz data rates, you wouldn't use this type of shielded cable for, uh, for, for the cable connection, uh, simply because this drain wire plus the uh, 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 aluminum foil is simply not working at this high frequency, as you can see here. But what is interesting, and I wanted to show you, right, is if you look at this, this is really the fundamental frequency of this signal, which sits at about uh, 10 megahertz, right? Because we, we selected 10 megahertz in our clock. And in at 10 megahertz, right? Now look at the trick I'm gonna do, right? So I'm explained this bit of wire is the drain drained wire, right? Inside the uh, the shield cable. And now because I cut it, now I just make a, a, a small connection, making them touching each other, okay? And I see the results. You see, at 10 megahertz, you see the noise is dropped down by almost 20 dB. Uh, I mean, this is just really literally the wire touching each other. If you have a good solid uh, connection, you will see at the lower frequency range, the performance will uh, be about 20 dB uh, uh, improvement. So you can see the drain wire, being the fact that connecting both ends right inside the foil, works at low frequency, but it's not doing anything in terms of the high frequency shooting effectiveness. Okay, we proved that using a aluminum foil with drain wire does not seem to be a good solution, especially if you are involved in designing high-speed transmission line between two subsystems. So now let's have a look at another type of shielded cable and compare the performance. So now we uh, have a look at the uh, USB type shielded cable. So this is a uh, iPhone charger, okay? Um, how this shielded cable is constructed can be seen from this example. Okay, so this is quite different with the D-type shielded cable as we demonstrated earlier on. We have first a braided type of uh, shield outside. Then we have, if you look closer, that's the aluminium <coughs> uh, sheath uh, inside. And of course, you can also see the drain wire that's there. There's drain, wires, uh, drain wire as well. Again, uh, to compare the two different, uh, well, to compare two different constructions, so this one you can treat it as the outside shield is not terminated, but only connected with a drain wire. And we're gonna have a quick look at the difference between uh, a fully terminated uh, shielded cable and this kind of dodgy uh, connected uh, cable. Okay, so that is the sort of destroyed shielded cable um, connection, okay? And this is the frequency performance. Now we swapped to the um, properly terminated shielded cable, and you can see the difference, particularly, again, from high frequency, 100 megahertz up to one gigahertz, you can see the reduction between 100 and 200 megahertz Again, more than 10 to 20 dB reduction easily can be achieved by terminating the shield properly. Okay, so in this first episode, we demonstrated a few interesting concepts. We hope you enjoyed it. 
and in the following episodes we're going to show you more on this specific subject and we're also going to show you some interesting products that uh, I've used. Uh, it might not be perfect for your application but you know in some specific niche applications these um, components often do the job if your shielded cable does not work. So um, see you next time.